Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you today to this webinar. My name is Luke Knight, I'm the Partnership Manager here at Sendable. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on building a successful social media strategy for your clients. Uh, we've got a very special guest, we've got Daniel Knowlton with us. Uh, he runs an awesome digital agency called KPS Digital Marketing. Uh, and he's also been voted the 12th most, most influential marketeer on Twitter, so you're in for some really good insights. First of all, uh, it'd be great just if everyone, everyone wants to give a shout out uh, in the questions of their name and where they're based in the world. It'd be great to hear. So we've got Toronto, lots of people here actually. So you've got Tiffany from Was uh, Tiffany Washington, got Anne from Florida, Elisa from DC, Joel from Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Novi from California. Wow. Belgium, good stuff. So great, uh, we always try and make these as interactive as possible, so uh, if you have any questions going through the webinar, please feel free to type them in the questions box and I'll try and answer those as much as we can. So we've got someone from St. Paul as well, so yeah, awesome. So um, good stuff, so uh, we're, we're, we're crack on. So first of all, we're just going to go through the agenda, which we're going to set out today. Um, Firstly, uh, for any of you Sendable users out there, or if you haven't used Sendable, you can sign up for a trial. And if you want to leave us a review on G2 Crowd, we've got a really good gift for you. So if you want to use the URL at the top, um, you can do that, and I'll let you know what the gift is at the end of the webinar. So Dan's going to be leading this webinar, so you're going to get some great insight. First of all, he's really going to be looking about strategy and the fundamentals of creating a social media strategy, so what you need to know and what you should be putting in place to actually build that. Also the content, so creating targeted, engaging content across the social networks and which social networks you should be using as well. He's got some really good live examples of websites and tools and things that he uses as well, so it should be, should be great. Also about partnerships and growth, so how to, uh, how to learn um, from client, uh, sorry, learn how clients choose their digital agencies and what attracts new business. So this should be great for uh, not only the agencies on board to get some insight, what people look for, but also for those people who aren't digital agencies. So for the people that uh, filled out the poll, we saw that 71% uh, were agencies and 29% weren't who are, who are watching today. So this should be a great all-round insight for everyone. Uh, then what I'm going to do is at the end, I'm going to just going to show a high-level overview of Sendable's white label offering, which is designed for agencies to help scale your business and improve productivity as well. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can see our handles at the bottom of the uh, page here, so at Sendable, and then we've got uh, Dan's one down here as well. Uh, if you want to uh, start tweeting and saying uh, that you're enjoying it or any questions you have, and we can happily answer them there as well. Okay. Uh, and also we've got a Q&A, so at the end we can answer any questions, and then we'll let you know which gift it is as well that, we've, that you get. So this is Dan and myself, just so you know who we are. So uh, again, you can just see what we look like, and we're both on LinkedIn, so feel free to add us on there and uh, get the conversation going as well. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Dan as well, and he's going to show you some really insightful ideas on how you can actually build your strategy. So bear with me a second. I'm just going to pass you over. There you go, Dan. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah. Hello. Good stuff. Yeah, we can see your screen as well, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, so as Luke said, we're going to be walking through strategy. And um, what we're going to be going through is pretty much showing you the, the, the process and the steps that we use to develop strategies for our clients. Um, as Luke said, if you're on social, please do connect with me. You can see my social links at the bottom there and say hello. Um, and what we're going to start with is, so the first step developing your strategy is to outline your objectives. This is something that a lot of people for clients or if you're just a business doing for this, this for yourself, you really need to first of all outline here of um, the types of things um, that you want to start looking at to types of objectives that you can kind of come up with for, re for a reason to use social. The main one that most people focus on is generating business, but there's so many other things that social media can help you with. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but here's just some kind of examples of the kinds of objectives that we come up with um, with our clients and that, that you can come up with yourself. Generating leads, increasing brand awareness, driving website traffic, improving customer service. This is a big one that lots of people don't consider actually. Um, social media is such a great platform to 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 deliver great customer service, especially Twitter. So if you're you're looking to improve your customer service, you know, that could be an objective you're trying to achieve. But whatever it is, start out with your objective. Start out, if, you, if you're an agency, ask your client, what is it you want to achieve from social media? That's the first step in anything we're going to do. So once you've kind of worked out your objective of what you actually want to achieve from using social, then you need to move on 
to uh, to here to do your research. This is so so important doing uh, your research, and there's a number of different ways that you can do this. And what this is all about is really understanding the market. For you to develop your own strategy, or for you to develop a strategy for your clients, you need to understand what are the top people in the, in your industry doing. What are they doing that's making them, you know perform so well on social and I'm just going to walk you through some of the different ways that you can do this research and I'm going to bring up my um, my browser in a second just to show you some examples of this in real time the first way to do it, Google is one of the best ways to search to start to 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 string together what the top people in that industry doing so for example let's let's say you're a top florists and this is really simple stuff, but it's so, so important. So we've got a Telegraph article here. We've got an independent article. What I'd then do is open up these different articles and start to look at, right, who are these top florists that are being mentioned in, um, so that you can see some, some Instagram photos here. I maybe look on, look on the other article here, the independent, and start to look at who are these, these florists that they're mentioning. right? Because we want to start to look at these, these different the social media accounts of the Telegraph. And let's have a look and see, open up their Instagram, what kinds of content are they posting? So when you're doing this research, you need to need to record this in a way which works for you. It could be writing notes on a piece of in paper. It could be creating some kind of um, cool, like, creative spreadsheet. It could be writing some big Word document. However, the best way that you research is a way that works for you. So start looking through these social accounts and making notes. What kind of, what styles of content are they using? All of those kinds of things. Start to research via um, the top searching. So this could be, you know, you could be an accountant. So you could type in top accountant. You could be a digital marketing agency. Type in top digital marketing agency and start to do some research in Google and record that. The second way that you can do your research if we bring this back up, is through social media search. You started to find some of the, the, the top businesses in, you, in that industry and looked at what they're doing. Then what I'd do is I'd bring up, uh, I'd bring up social media. I'd bring up, say, Facebook, for example. I'll just have a look. So on here we found, uh, who was it? So this is Esme Flowers. So Esme Flowers. Um, and here we go. Um, so I'd start to look what they're doing, literally write notes, what content are they sharing, who are they engage, engaging with, what types of content are they sharing, is it video, is it photos, and look at what they're doing and learn from it. Go on the various different accounts, go on to Facebook, go on to Twitter, go on to Instagram. One of the best ways to get all of their social accounts up would be to just search their website, let's do it now, Esme Flowers, um, where are we, Esme Flowers, thanks Graham Cousins, just send me a message if he's watching the webinar. Um, so yeah, I'd go onto their website and then I'd literally just look for their social accessible. So that's the next way I'd start to do my research. The third way you can do your research is by using some really, really great tools. BuzzSumo, Clout and FollowerWonk. Here's three, three great tools that I use. And what these tools will help you do is they'll help you find the most influential people in a certain industry. And from there, you can start to learn from these people. So let me talk you through, walk you through this live. Let's start with BuzzSumo. So BuzzSumo is a great tool that can do various things. Um, it can help you find based on keywords that you type in here. But one of its best features that I found is its influencers section here. So um, if you click onto the influencers section, you can type in any keywords. Let's just do a random one. Let's type in um, finance. Say you're, you're one of your clients is in the finance industry or you're in the finance industry. You can type in finance. And what this will do is it will bring up lots of different people who use finance a lot in their, on their social profiles. And then you can, there's different columns here to rank these people based on their page authority, their domain authority, et cetera. So I click the page authority tab, and this will now rank each of these different accounts in how authoritative they are in the industry based on the keywords you're typing. So say, for example, WordPress is top here. Um, John A, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but let's say this guy here in the finance industry, I'd then look, go onto his, into his profile and start to look, what, what kinds of content is he sharing? Like, what's he doing? And start to get an understanding of what he, that's one tool you can use. And again, this can be applied to any kind of industry that you could, <laughs> could be a florist, um, it could be, in, or the clients that you're hoping to help with social media is, type in those keywords and start to look up and do a bit of research to see who are the most influential in that industry and do your research that way. So that's another tool for you. The next one, Clout. 
Clout is a tool which you is a free tool. You connect to your various social accounts, and it gives you a score from zero to a hundred. A hundred being the most influential in your industry, zero being the least. Um, and it's uh, one of the great ways you can use this is to use the search bar at the top, similar to the way we've just used Buzzsumo, and start to search for people in a certain industry. So, for example, say you're a digital marketing agency, which some of you, well, it sounds like 70% of you are. I'd type in here or digital marketing, let's have a look, digital marketing, and I would, on the right hand side here, we've got the top experts in digital marketing, so as we go down, what I do is I start to say Jeff Bullis is there, Jeff Bullis is a great marketeer, um, if you have, so I'd click on his profile, and then uh, you can start to look at what he's doing, and then from here you can click on his various social channels, he's his Twitter channel, and I can look, right, what is Jeff Bullis doing that's made him so influential? What's he sharing? Cool, he's got some really visual content at the top there, he's got a lead magnet, uh, which is driving traffic to uh, just to show you this live, look, we can see what he's doing here, so that's maybe one strategy he's using. Uh, yeah, so look, here's a landing page, that's something he's doing to guest build his email list. So I'd start to look down and see what he's doing there, I then click on um, his... You get the gist of this, guys. It's really doing as much research on the top performing people in the specific industry you're, you're focusing on and understand what they are doing. Okay. The final tool to do your research is Follower Wonk. Now, this is another great free tool created by Moz. Um, and what I do to, to research and find the most influential people in a certain industry on this tool is go to the section here, which says Search Bios. Type in your keywords again, so let's try and mix this up a bit. So let's say you're in the technology industry. Type in technology, click enter, and it will search for um, accounts, Twitter accounts. This is just for Twitter, by the way, in authority. And you can click that, and it will rank these accounts from the most authoritative, again, a score from zero to 100, to the least. So we can see that Windows, obviously, Windows is a huge, huge company. I'll start to look at what TechCrunch is doing. Um, so it's a similar thing for Clout, for Basuma, and for, for Follower Wonk. Start to research and see what people are doing and start to make notes. This step is so, so crucial, everyone. Please don't skip this out because if you miss this out, your strategy is not going to work as well as it possibly could. So that's the first step. Let's keep going with this. Research. The next step. It's really important. You need to choose the right. This is so, so important. There's so many different networks out there, but how do you choose which social networks is right? Which social networks are your ideal customers on? This is so important because, obviously, the main point of being on social media is to reach the people you want to reach, to reach the decision makers. So are your customers on there? And what I've done for you guys, and what we've done, is we've put together, I'm just going to bring it up now, we've put together an article, which is here, called How to Choose the Right Social Networks for Your Business, and this article shows you the different demographics on each platform. It shows you here it shows you how many people, like the demographics of people on Snapchat. So what I'd advise you to do, I'm not going to go through it now. Take a look at this article and look at the demographics and see how they match up with your target market. See which platforms they're focused on. If, if it's you're a small business and you're a, you're a, a shop or a restaurant, match them up with the different platforms there. So that's the first question I'd ask. The second is networking. Do you have someone in your team who's really good at chatting and networking, or are you good at that? Um, Instagram's full of high-quality photography and videos. Do you have someone who's really creative with photography and stuff? So think about the different platforms and how they match up with you or your team's skills. That's the second question you need to ask. The final question is which social networks do you enjoy using? And this sounds very fluffy and just, you know, not set in stone but it's so important because it's a well-known fact if you enjoy doing something you're going to put more effort into it you're going to do it more consistently and you're going to get better results so what i do guys um put this into an excel spreadsheet and grade each of these questions out of 10 uh, for the different social networks so put facebook here twitter linkedin um, instagram and mark them out of 10 add up the scores and then work out which platforms are right for you one final tip with choosing your social networks never just focus on one single network Spread yourselves across a few platforms and make sure you're using them really well, guys, because if you don't and, you know, Facebook could shut down tomorrow, Twitter could shut down tomorrow, so, so don't just put all your eggs in one basket, use a few platforms very well. If you've got the resources to use platforms, more platforms well, then do that, but um, if you haven't, then just use a few core platforms very well. So that's the next step. The next step, this is so, so important, guys, and this is your social media content strategy. This is the hub of everything you do. This is the content that you are sharing. This is probably the most important part of your social strategy. 
So let me talk through how we develop a content strategy and the kinds of things we look at doing. Here's some examples of the types of content I'd focus on posting, um, but let me let me just give you a, a brief near why are the key decision makers they're trying to reach on these platforms? What kind of content do they like seeing? What do they actually want to engage with? The biggest problem most businesses do now is they focus on what they want to put out. They want to put out sales messages. They want to put out stuff about their products. No one cares about that. What you need to do is think of yourself as a media hub, guys, as a media hub where your audience wants to go. So let me give you some examples of this. Let me move the screen across of some companies who are really doing this well. You may have heard of Nifty. This is like a, a kind of a how to on teaching people how to do really cool stuff. They've got loads of really cool videos on five hacks for makeup lovers. Look, they've got easy DIY, loads of amazing, amazing content. And this is the stuff that people actually want to consume. So say, for example, I was a makeup artist. I'd be focusing on creating cool, um, cool videos and things like this five makeup five hacks for makeup lovers because that's the kind of thing people who like makeup want educational stuff that educates entertains and inspires them so start to think of yourself as a media hub for your industry another great example here is on the tour is a really great uh, page focused on um it's got a demographic of kind of laborers and, and manual manual laborers and things like that and they share lots of really funny interesting exciting content that their target audience loves uh, are heavily focused upon it by the people that are doing it really well. So I've really made up your content strategy. Um, another guy, Chris Cubby, this is a guy on Instagram you should all follow, marketing agencies who are watching this, digital marketing agencies, or people that want to learn about marketing. This guy is killing it right now on social, and he's killing it with his company and his content strategy. His design work is insane. It's just absolutely on point. His Instagram stories are so, so actionable stuff. He, he literally, um, he, he shares with you, actionable tips and strategies that you can use it's just a great guy to follow and get inspiration anything from any kind of company doing it right these guys are doing it right just take a look down their stream the visuals they use their messaging is just on point with how they want to be perceived as a brand they're just he's here it's just it's just quality just take a look at what they're doing there um, I'm not going to go through all of these comments, um, but as I say, just think about what do your audience actually want to see? Answer those questions, educate them, inspire them, entertain them, do some fun stuff, show your personalities, like um, get that kind of stuff across, guys. Businesses aren't being fun enough. Businesses, for some reason, we, we, we put up some kind of corporate barrier and we think we have to be all very corporate, but no, be fun, show the personalities of your businesses and use some of these examples here. The final tip for your content, developing a content strategy is look at what the industry experts are doing. I mentioned this in the previous step. This is your gateway to fast tracking performance. Do what work is working already in the industry. So the next part of your social strategy you should be looking at is engagement. What are you actually going to do? What's your plan to engage with your audience? Um, and it's really, really important you kind of map this out. Um, so moving forward, we kind of break engagement up into two sections, proactive engagement and reactive. And what we do for us and our clients is we create a daily tick sheet, a, a daily, a weekly, and a monthly tick sheet. This is an initial thing we do to make sure people stay on track. We literally write down everything they need to do um, in terms of engagement on a daily, a weekly, and a monthly basis so they stick by it. And each week we have a call and we say, hey, Rick, have you done everything this week? Are all your ticks in all the right boxes? So as a, as a step to develop your engagement strategy, you need to write down what is it everything you need to do proactively and reactively. So here's some examples. Um, using social media search to find and engage with potential customers. This is a big part of what we do to proactively find people who uh, may be interested in using our products or services. So here's an example here I've just brought up, specific topics. And it's, I'm not gonna go through this in huge detail. Um, there's lot, I can link lots of tutorials out there. But let's say you're a company that sells uh, beard related products. This is really random, but um, beard related products. So like beard waxes and beard oils and things like that. What I do here is type in recommend beard question mark and click search. Now this is going to bring up all of the tweets that are using recommend uh, beard and a question mark. So hopefully this is going to be the kind of stuff where people are saying, can anyone recommend me a cool beard something or example now? So I'm a beard, a beard dye or oil company. Marcus said here, can anyone, can any men recommend a decent beard dye that doesn't cost a fortune? I, what I'd do if I was, you know, beards are us, whatever your company is doing beard products. I'd reach out to Marcus and I'd send him a personalized video of you saying, hey, Marcus, 
we'd love to send you a free tr test of our product, or even if you don't want to give a free beer, I'd say, hey, Marcus, um, why don't you try our beard dye, which is comes in XYZ colors and that kind of thing, okay? So that's just one example of the types of things we do proactively. Um, th there's other things like creating a Twitter list and engagement. We, we tend to do, we do with our clients is we create lists on Twitter and then Twitter's. So I'd, I'd go on this on a daily basis and then I'd go scroll through the content and I'd start to engage with it. So I'd say... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. Um, I think your audio is just uh, chopping a little like bit out. When you Bullis. Let's like that. Let's retweet. So yeah, so I, I basically map out what's the proactive stuff you're going to do. In terms of reactive stuff, um, how quickly do you aim to respond on social media? This is a, a thing that for digital marketing agencies, you need to get your clients to map out what's their plan for responding. Who's 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 going to be responsible for responding? Who's gonna, what times are they responsible? How quickly do they need to respond? Um, create a set of guidelines around how they should respond. You know, what tone of voice should they be using? What kinds of kinds of responses should they be be responding with, and that kind of thing. So that's really important to map out your your engagement. Uh, strategy. The next part is your social media growth strategy. So um, again, this is where I'd be mapping out every single thing I'd be doing to grow my audience on social for us or our clients. And here's stupid, but your most important strategy should be uh, producing great, great content. If you're not doing that, no one's going to want to follow you and you're not going to be able to grow an audience. So that's the most important thing. Next, paid social advertising, especially Facebook ads on Facebook and Instagram is one of the best quickest, fastest ways to grow a targeted audience. We've created a tutorial for you there, um, which will show you uh, a strategy we found to, to grow our audience by 10% of what it normally costs on Facebook. We've got a really cool, innovative strategy. So take down that link there and have a look at that tutorial if you're interested. There's also some great social media growth tools. There's a tool called Juicier. Um, if you, if for Twitter, it's helped me grow 30,000 plus followers. It's helped me grow tons of followers for my client, targeted followers for my clients. If you could go on this link here, make sure you use a capital J and lowercase everything else. So bit.ly forward slash juicier10. Um, uh, there's a 10% discount code there for juicier. It's a great, great tool. Um, also, social growth is a good one for Instagram to grow your Instagram following. Some more tactics here. Integrate online and offline marketing. That's really important. So if you've got printed signage, if you've got banners at events and things, make sure you're integrating it on your business cards. As much as you can do to integrate that stuff, it's going to help you grow. Be creative, like use your email signature. On your business cards, have your Snapchat code or your social links. Have social media links on your T-shirt, on your branded T-shirts. Like think outside the box, guys. Have like every month we have a meeting where we come up with creative ideas as to how we can grow our audience. So I think you should, good guys should be doing that as well. If you're an agency or if you're an individual business, you should be doing that with your team. Collaborating, collaborating with um, collaborating with other people in your industry, other influencers, other businesses. This is a big thing that we've done. We've, we've worked with various other agencies to, to put on events together, to, to create content together, collaborate with your, with your competitors. Don't put a barrier up. Collaboration is so, so crucial in this industry. Make sure you're going to tons of industry events. There's a great event called Social Day, uh, which is run in London, Birmingham, Manchester, which is an event I go to every time and I speak at, and it's great. Competitions is another great one, influencer marketing. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to go through all of these, but here's just some, some, some tactics that you need to, need to kind of, that, that really work. The main point of this, guys, is to write down every single thing you plan to do to grow your audience. Even type in on Google how to grow an audience on Instagram, how to grow an audience on Snapchat. Get ideas from there and then add them to your strategy. The next thing is performance me measurement. It's so important that you measure the performance. The way you do that is to is to relate your 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 the, the sorry the metrics you're going to measure relate them back to your objective. If your if your objective was to generate new leads, you need to measure how many leads you're generating via social media. Sounds kind of simple, right? If you want to increase brand awareness, you need to measure your social media reach. How many people are you reaching each month? What's the change in percentage of that reach from the previous month? Website traffic. If if your objective is to grow website traffic. Uh, you know, how much website site traffic are you growing? This sounds basic, guys, but it's important to to link your the, the measurements you're taking back to the core objectives you set out at the start of your strategy. I'm not going to go through all of these, guys. I'm going to sh share with you some different tools now that you can use to measure that kind of stuff and to use for social. Now, here are tools that I cannot live without in social. I've used various social media management tools, and 
like I know uh, I can't remember how many of you guys are using Sendable, so you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's just an all-in-one tool which does everything you could possibly imagine. It's so great. So that's that's a tool I use. Other tools include HubSpot. HubSpot is a great sales funnel tool. These aren't all specifically social media, but these are great digital marketing tools. Um, lead feed is a great tool that you can use to see uh, what businesses are coming to your website, what, what actions they're taking, and you can get their contact details to chase them up. It's a great lead generator. Follow up juicier and clout I mentioned earlier. Pushcrew is a great um, is a great uh, push notifications plugin for Google Chrome, where you can send people push notifications, kind of like getting people to sign up to an email list, but much simpler. And you can send them notifications on their on their, their Google Chrome when they they've got it open. Um, also down here, we've like I'm not going to talk you through all of this, but we've created um, a blog which shows you five incredible so smartphone video tools which you should check out, and also smartphone image um, image editing tools here with this link here. They're so, so good. Gleam is the best social media competition software I've ever used. If you're doing a social media competition, you should check out that. Outlook. Now, this seems kind of weird why I've got this here, but we use Outlook for organization. At the start of every month, we plan all the activities we need to do for us and our clients with their social media strategy, and we schedule in time for every single activity, and that's why it's so important to us. Google Analytics, a great free tool to measure website analytics. Optin Monster is a great lead form uh, uh, tool which helps you produce lead forms and lead magnets and things. It's great. There's just a ton of tools here, guys. And, and again, I'm, I'm really active on social media. If you've got any uh, other questions after this that we can't answer now, just tweet me. Here's my Twitter account and ask me and I'll help you or go on Instagram run through. But um, if you want more detail, please just ask. And, and maybe we've got time for some questions now, Luke. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's but, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening, guys. Good stuff. Thanks, Dan. So that was incredibly insightful. Uh, apologies for any audio issues. I, I believe it's down to go to webinar, which we use. So for some reason, because we've actually got a lot of people uh, on here at the moment, so it may just be something to do with that. But it has been recorded, and we'll we get this over to you uh, after the webinar as well as the slides. So I know uh, we've had a lot of really good feedback from people watching on Dan's slides, so we're happily send all those to you as well. Um, as you see, you can see all Dan's. Uh, social media um, uh, names down here so obviously follow him and ask him any questions as well but um, I'm just going to go has anyone got, actually got any questions for Dan now we can go into Q&A come on guys ask away <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone's asked can you please repeat the juicier bitly link it's not working for me right so yep so it's bit.ly I'll type it in here as forward well yeah, so forward slash, this is why it's weird, because it needs to be a capital, a capital J. Hang on. O, yeah, you got this, Luke? So, yeah, a bit, uh, Lee, then forward slash, capital J, did you say? Capital J, lowercase, yep. O-O-C, yep. I-E-R-10. I'm just going to check it works now on my phone. Um, cool, I'm just going to send this to everyone. There we go, guys. Perfect. And that, that provides you a 10% off of Juicier as well, which, um, which is quite handy. Perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, we do. Ha we have got the slides, and it's been recorded, so we'll edit that and get that out to everyone as well. Uh, so Dan, so, so Tiffany's asked, uh, how do any of these techniques differ from a non-profit? Um, I don't think they differ at all, really. I think the, these can these can all be applied to a non-profit. Um, I guess um, with a non-profit, you've actually got an advantage um, that you're not you're not trying to sell people products and services. So, so some, a barrier that lots of people have online when you're, when you're marketing, everyone thinks you've got an ulterior motive to sell them stuff. So to be honest, as a non-profit, you've actually got a huge, huge advantage. So I'd say you can go for more, right, if you've read Gary Vee's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, you can go for more right hooks. You can, go, you can ask people for more stuff because you're, um, because you're, a, uh, because you're a non-profit, I'd say you've got more opportunities to ask for help. However, you still need to focus on providing value for your audience. You can't just think, because I'm a non-profit, I can just ask for loads of stuff. You still need to heavily focus on all the stuff I've mentioned now and focus on building a media hub where your audience want to go to learn about stuff to do with your industry. Good stuff. So uh, I see Ali had a question. Uh, Ali had a question. Uh, how, do you, how to manage clients' expectations and match them with realistic expectations? Um, I think it's all about just being honest from the start. So um, managing expectations is something that comes up 
all the time. Like with us, we've learned a huge amount about the managing expectations, and it's it's so important to to manage your expectations, your clients' expectations at the start. So what I'd focus on doing is look at previous results you've achieved with other clients. Like guide them towards those. If you've got case studies to to show them, say to them, hey, client B, if you look at client A who we helped in your industry, you can see that we helped them achieve X, Y, Z in X amount of time. So so I'd really go, if you can, go on data and go on go on real life statistics that you've already kind of uh, achieved for other clients and then say to them, that's the kind of stuff we've done before. So, you know, we never know because every client's different. You don't know if their their business is a complete failure. You don't know if no one's going to like the products or services, but you, you, you can demonstrate you've achieved results with previous clients. That's what I'd focus on. Um, and just communicating as well. Like, make sure you communicate them at the start communicate with them at the start don't ever pull the wool over their eyes don't ever try and oversell something don't ever say you can achieve really great results like ultra good results when you don't know if you can because they're always you're always going to be on the back foot just be ultra realistic and go on the back of data and statistics of stuff you've achieved in the past good stuff definitely and it's all, all about the sort of long term in social media as well isn't it so it's uh, setting the slight expectations but seeing the growth coming through so that's definitely good of course tips. Cool. Uh, so uh, Amanda's asked, how does TripAdvisor or other review sites factor into social media strategy? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't use TripAdvisor much, to be honest, with our clients. Oh, actually, no, we do. Sorry, we, we've got a hotel. Sorry, backtracking here. We've got a hotel who uses, um, who uses TripAdvisor, and. Um, the way we integrate uh, TripAdvisor, we don't actually use TripAdvisor much in the hotel. What we do is we get, provide an incentive at the front desk to get people to review on Facebook because um, a cool tip which I learned recently, actually, this is kind of to do with TripAdvisor, but it's more Facebook reviews. If you prompt, if you prompt people to review you, to, to, sorry, to check in, this is what we do. We prompt people to check into the hotel then they'll get a notification a few days later asking them to review the hotel, your hotel. So, um, I mean, in terms of, in terms of joining uh, TripAdvisor in with social, I'd say you need to kind of decide which platform you're using for your review sites. Um, I definitely recommend using Facebook to get reviews. Um, and I, I guess promoting your, your TripAdvisor page across social. Um, one of the best ways to get TripAdvisor reviews isn't actually by using social media. We found that it's to, to, to integrate that with printed, uh, printed signage in your store or in your location-based business, prompting people with an incentive to go, to go and give you a re review on TripAdvisor or on Facebook. So, for example, here's an example. I went to Thailand a uh, two years ago, and there was a, there was a, um, a restaurant there with thousands of five-star reviews, and they're like the top on TripAdvisor and everything. And when I went now, I realized why, because to get on the Wi-Fi, you had to do a review and you got a free coffee. So obviously everyone's going to do it. So kind of in terms of answering your question, I'd think about integrating offline marketing, printed marketing within incentives to, to drive reviews rather than integrating social. Perfect. Awesome answer. Cool. So we've got um, Paige has asked, do, uh, you, Dan, do you manage clients' social media or do you teach them to manage their own social media? Great question. We do both. So we, we, we do both. We started out as, as mainly focusing on um, kind of just doing training, but we soon realized that uh, there was a place in the market for us to actually be managing the social, social media ourselves. So we do a combination. We do three things. We do full training, so we train clients to do this themselves. We do full management, so we do everything ourselves. We also do a mixture of the two. Something that we found work, has worked really well with, with various clients is actually doing, starting out with one to three months of us developing the strategy and managing the strategy and then doing like a handover to, to an in-house team, training up their in-house team to manage that strategy effectively because to be honest, you have to do what's best for the client and I truly believe the best thing that for, the, for a client is for them to manage, manage their social media in-house purely because if they've got the skills and the resources to do that, you know, they're, they're living that business. They, they can instantly react to things that are happening in that business because they're there. So, I'd say we always tend to try and focus on us managing it and then 
and then training an in-house team. Although that's not as good for us in terms of the revenue we can generate, we know that's better for our clients, so that's kind of what we've focused more on recently. Nice one. Um, so, yeah, uh, if I pronounce this right, sorry, uh, Priyanka has got a question. Can one, uh, can one search for influencers based on country and region on Clout or, Buzz, uh, or BuzzSumo? Um, mm. Oh yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can. Uh, sorry, you can do it on Follow Wonk. I've done it on Follow Wonk before. Uh, the, there's a bar underneath where you can search for region. I'm sure. To be honest, I I haven't done it. I haven't tried to do it before on Buzzsumo or Clout. I'm not sure. I don't think you do it on Clout, but I'm sure you should be able to do it on Buzzsumo. But um, if you tweet me, tweet me this question. Um, and I'll have a look and answer it for you. But I haven't tried it before on Buzzsumo, so I don't know, I'm afraid. Cool. So uh, Cheryl's asked, uh, how do you work out a fee per platform or overall package? Um, good question. We we tend to tend to base the fee on the time it's going to take us, like how much time we're investing as a team in in helping the client, and that can be that can be hugely varied like it could be that we're just just managing their Instagram account and creating in content for Instagram so that'll be much less time than if we're doing a full management of Instagram on Twitter LinkedIn doing video production every month creating um, creating gifts and, and and custom imagery and doing photography and things like that so so the way we do it is we work out what the client wants we then work out everything we need to do to make sure we not only meet that client's expectations, but we exceed their expectations. And then we map out how much time is all of that stuff going to take. And then we base our fee on the time we're going to invest in helping that client. Good stuff. We've got, okay. So, Novi has asked recommendations to encourage clients to provide more personalized content for posts, like office staff photos and videos. So how, how do you encourage your clients to actually give you those pictures? Great question. Great question. Um, it's all about communication. We've this is this is a great question because this is something we've struggled with in the past. Um, if if you're managing a client's social accounts and um, you know they're doing their thing, they expect you to do everything, but you really want to get that. You need to get stuff from behind the scenes in the office and, and sales guys on the road. And it's all about communication. So one thing we do um, now is we set up we set up some kind of communication hub, whether it be a WhatsApp group, a Slack group, um, so that we can instantly message each other. And if we need something, we can instantly message them. But also we have weekly calls, so we will like one thing I'd advise you to do is literally pick up the phone and call them um, and make and say to them, look, we agreed this, we really need this to work to achieve the results we want to achieve. We need you to give us this stuff. So that's what I do. The final thing is to manage their expectations at the start. So when you start to deal with this, your new client, um, say to them, hey, client A, um, for us to do our job effectively, we really need you to give us images of what's going on behind the scenes, photos of this, videos of that. And, and help them like if they say but we don't know how to do that then say no problem at all let me provide some give you some training let me show you some tools you can use like give them everything they can to do it um, and then follow up and manage that manage that communication with them and that's important that's what we do cool uh, Ali's asked I'm trying to hire a freelance social media manager for my agency what sort of fees should I be paying them and what qualities should I be looking for um, I have no idea. I've never hired a freelance social media person, so sorry, but I I'm, I literally don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, so Chase has asked, uh, we're, we're developing an internal social media team for a public library. We are wondering if you have any ideas about how to manage content submissions from teams and how to manage social media editorial calendars. So I know you mentioned about the calls and the calendars. Yeah, is there any more. Um, as in, as in, like how to putting your your content together in what some kind of hub? Is that what you're talking about? I think so. Is there any ideas about how to manage content submissions from Teams? Oh, so do you use like so, I guess like Dropbox or Google Drive or anything like that to get submitted? Oh, possibly. Yeah. So I I guess one thing just to backtrack a bit. One thing is sendable. Like we like you can have different team members on sendable and upload content there that you can that we can kind of review and things the other one is yes we use dropbox so um dropbox is just so 
great in terms of having a hub of content where everyone has access to. Um, and then I'd also recommend having some kind of uh, tool to communicate. So like a WhatsApp group or a Slack group where you can all discuss ideas, share different things. Slack's really great, by the way. If you you, you do use Slack, like, like if you haven't given it a go, give it a go. It's a really great um, free messaging platform that has loads of cool features. Good stuff. And uh, Sendable actually recently integrated with Slack as well. So you can schedule all of your Slack updates if you've got like tasks and things you need to build for your clients and team members as well. So yeah, that really good yeah, advice, yeah. Dan. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> cool. Uh, so another question here. How how uh, how would promoting bra uh, and branding and in an individual on the digital space differ from that of a branded of a product? For instance, handling social profiles for celebrities. Um, it would differ in the fact that um, most of it, as a per, like I've got a lot of experience with this because I've built up my whole I've built up our whole business around my personal brand. My brother and I have worked together to build up this business. Sorry, not just me. My brother and I have worked up to build this business around my personal brand. Um, so I'd always recommend building up a personal brand in any business. People buy from people. Um, so having some kind of face in the content, having a person is much more powerful than not having a person. So. The way it would differ is there'd be a person in the content more. Like, I, I don't know how how else to explain this. You know, if you, I, I think for both for both areas there should be a person. So even if you've got a brand or a business, you know, I feel that there should be a person or like a face of that brand or business because people are much more likely to buy from uh, buy from a person rather than a logo. So for us. We've got um, we, I, we we manage all of my all of my personal social accounts. We've also got KPS Digital Marketing's accounts, but we focus on on using my personal brand on those accounts also. So, um, if I was going to give you personal advice, I'd say it, they shouldn't differ. They should both include a per, some kind of person or some kind of um, influential person or people within that brand communicating the, the messaging rather than just going with like the logo and no person behind it. Awesome. Uh, I think that's all the questions now. Uh, actually, another one's just come in. Uh, Dan, sure. you've got time for another question? Are you, are you all good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, should there be a 50-50 split in text-based content versus visual-based content like images, videos, and infographics, or an 80-20 split with more visuals? Good question. It completely, completely depends on the platform. So let me give you some context. Um, Something like most people say, you know, videos and visuals and, and images are really great on social, which they are. People respond a lot better to them in most cases on things like Facebook, native video. So when you upload a video directly to Facebook, they've been perform outperforming any other kind of content that we've that we've been using across various different industries. So for Facebook, I'd say most of your content needs to be native videos, need, needs to be images with no links out. Um, this is this is another pointer for content. Any content that links out to another website will not perform well, as well at all um, compared to other content that doesn't link out because social accounts want to, social platforms want to keep you on the platform. They don't want you to to go out, so they they um, they score it better with their algorithm. Um, something like LinkedIn, though, um, we've been noticing that. Uh, just just image based posts with a large amount of copy uh, will work really well and also just text based posts have been working better than some text and image or text and video based posts so to answer to answer this question it's it depends which platform my advice to you would be um, do your research and start to look up and like research w what content performs best on each platform i've given you some pointers there as to what's working for us and our clients but do your own group research also test test different types of content measure the results and then you can make a better educated decision as to what's working for you because you never know in a, in a whatever your industry is it could be working different to to other to other industries so it's always important to test 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 and then make an educated decision don't just guess 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 Good stuff. So just one last question um, from Tiffany. Uh, do you see a difference between old school journal uh, journalism, uh, such as news articles versus content? How do you uh, define content? Good question. I'd say they merge. Like for us, our whole digital slash content strategy in involves old school journalism and it involves new school 
like social media content. Um, I think as a business, as a personal brand, as an organization, you need to develop a strategy that uses all of the like all of these various old school and new new school tactics that are still working. So. Um, Although old like old school tactics in terms of TV ads and radio ads are aren't working as well as they used to, stuff like news articles, blogging, guest blogging is still working really well in a lot of industries. So for us, we use that as as a as a kind of uh, a string on our bow in terms of our strategy. We also use social media. We use video production. We use SEO. Like you, you, you I wouldn't start to think about these platform the, these these channels. Sorry, individually. You need to be thinking about using a well-rounded strategy that's bringing in various different elements. Face-to-face -face networking, that's not digital, but that needs to be a huge part. Like, I'd advise you that needs to be a big part of your whole digital, not digital, sorry, your whole marketing business strategy because that's one of the best ways to build relationships. So well, people always go on about, what do I need to do for social media, social media this, social media that. That's one element of, that should be one element of your whole business marketing strategy. Just being on social media and doing social media well isn't going to work as well as using different, uh, different kind of channels to help you achieve your objectives. Perfect. So uh, for everyone still with us, I'm just going to do a really quick overview of our white label version. So I know a lot of people are interested in our white label version of Sendable for agencies. So I've just got a few slides if people want to um, have a look through them. I just want to say a huge thanks to Dan. It's been very insightful. I've learned a lot as well, which is really good. Um, and uh, me, Yeah, no, no, it's awesome. And you can see all, again all his social media accounts down here. So please feel free to tweet and follow him and everything like that. And we'll hopefully get Dan again in the future as well to get some more webinars going. Uh, but I'm For just, sure. yeah, no, that's no, awesome, dude. Like, uh, I'm basically going to go through a couple of slides now if people want to stick with us and you can also uh, ask any questions of White Label. And if we've got time at the end, if Dan's, if you're still free, if any other questions come in, uh, we can happily answer them, hopefully. Sure, no problem. Cool. So, yeah, Sendable's got a white label version. This is designed really for agencies to be able to have your own uh, custom branded um, platform. So everything's completely branded, which I'll show you shortly, all the URLs, all the posts and everything like this as well. So it's just going to really uh, help you stand out uh, from your other agencies as well. So obviously you've learned a lot of great strategy through Dan today, but this is going to also help as well when you're in um, sort of like meetings or pitches to actually be going in there. So your company might, you know, be using a third party software. And so clients might think actually, you know, I could possibly do that. So uh, a white label version is a really good way to sort of scale your business. Again, you can create a new revenue stream because you can set permissions and you can let people have different access on the dashboard. So if you want them just to do posting or monitoring or reporting, you can do that as well. Uh, you can manage multiple clients with these, as uh, Dan said earlier as well. Uh, you can sort of do send for approvals. You can do uh, share tasks within Sendable. You can do uh, content libraries that you can share with your clients as well. So a really great way to collaborate with them and get alerts when you need to, um, you know, answer mentions and uh, keywords for social selling. Uh, and we, we do integrate with Dropbox and Google Drive as well as mentions. That's a great way they can put content in there for yourselves. You can also scale your agency quickly as well because, as we sort of spoke about earlier, um, you can actually uh, sort of start teaching your clients how to use social media, how to use your sendable uh, white label tool. And when they're confident enough, you can then just say, actually, now you can have a user license. You know, manage it your own. We're here to help with any questions you have. But then you can go on to the next client, teach them how to use the tool, teach them the hints and tips of social media, and let them go. So it's a really scalable way to grow your business very quickly as well. Uh, and also you can create your own bespoke solution. So we've got an API. So if you do offer, uh, you know, lots of other tools, as uh, Dan showed earlier, there's lots of tools out there. You can actually embed them in the white label in iframes, or you can use that API to actually build your own tool as well. So it's a really good way to sort of scale your own sort of marketing automation, social media software that you can then sell to, for user licenses to your clients. So this is a quick high level overview of the branding you can do. So you get the fully branded dashboard, you get custom URL at the top. Uh, you get custom posts, so it says sent via, and it can have your agency's name under each post, or it can have your client's name. You get custom email notifications as well, so you can have uh, notifications of even things like TripAdvisor, Yelp, City Search, uh, for those review sites, as well as all your like Facebook likes and um, everything like that. Uh, you can get custom URL shorteners, so you can actually have the URL shortener actually branded with your agency or your clients. Again, that's a really nice. Uh, Really nice feature. And you also get the custom branded reports. So we've redone all our uh, reporting recently. 
and you can put like uh, your own custom uh, front pages on there with your uh, agency logo. You can schedule those uh, reports to go out on any time you want. So you want, you can say every week on a Friday at five o'clock, I want um, a report to go to my clients. It's all automated, all refresh content, and you don't have to sit there for hours like collating all that together. So again, it's a really good productivity tool, and it's all branded your agency as well. So managing multiple clients. So you can uh, allocate different user types. So you can actually have a team member, you can have admin, which would be yourself on the white label. You can have a team member, which then can manage other clients. So imagine you're an agency. So we've done a, um, a poll at the beginning and we saw that 13% of people today had over 51 clients. And uh, then we had uh, six to 10 clients, that's 34%. Uh, so some of these people, uh, some of these agencies, if you're managing multiple clients, you're gonna have account managers. So on the white label, you could have account manager one and they can only access their five clients and then account manager two can only access their five clients, etc. So it's a really good way for your whole um, your whole company to work on one dashboard. And as a uh, manager, you can report down on them, see KPIs, it's like response times, uh, tasks assigned, everything like that as well. And your clients can also use a dashboard if they're locked down as a client and they won't know that your colleagues are on there or your other clients and they can use that tool themselves. So a really good way to manage those multiple clients. You can assign different user permissions, as I briefly mentioned. So you can actually say if you want them only to do posting or reporting or monitoring or anything like that, or the social CRM, you can lock down all those permissions and start, you know, monetizing it by like your bronze, silver, or gold package based on, you know, what you let them have access to. Uh, you can create workflows. So if there's like a, a negative mention or positive mention because we show sentiment, you could then go and assign that task to your client and say, actually, I've seen a bit of negative feedback. You may want to answer this quickly or you know you may assign it to one of your account managers or uh, assign tasks and that sort of way to support teams or anything. So again, a great way to collaborate between yourself, your clients and all your colleagues as well. We've got shared services. So shared services allows you to set up all your social media, uh, set up the social media accounts as an admin, and then you can actually share access to like their Facebook account, their Twitter account, anything to your colleagues, but you never actually have to give them the password. You can say actually when you're in sendable, you can have access to my uh, to my client's Facebook or Twitter account, but I've never given you the password or the login details. And if they leave the company or they move on to a different client, you can suddenly just move that away from them as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got send for approval, so you can actually ask clients, uh, can, you, can you approve this post? And they get an email and they can click yes, no, or they can then go in and edit that or change the dates or anything around. Uh, we've got the private uh, and shared content. Again, that's uh, within uh, the dashboard where you can actually build a folder of like custom testimonials for client A, and only client A has access to them or that colleague has access. And then we have that Google Drive and Dropbox integration as well to help further improve that. Uh, we've also got, uh, you can allow your prospects to trial your white label, so you can actually have a sign up form on your website and you can have prospects you can just come in and start trialing your own social media management tool. Again, a great way to massively scale that and you can set like seven days or you know a month they trial that as well. So really good way uh, if you do like a mass marketing campaign, people can just sign up and start using your tool straight away and then you can hopefully move them on to paying customers as well. So good way to scale that. So we've got some... Um, uh, sort of listening tools as well, so we can monitor across the whole social web, including the main social media sites, things like CNN, blog sites, again, TripAdvisor, Yelp, City Search, Glassdoor, uh, and you can get uh, email notifications with uh, sentiments, so if it's positive or negative, and again, in all our reporting, we can uh, filter by um, sentiment, and you can compare different keywords, so you could put all your comp clients' competitors in there, and then on a weekly basis, you could say, actually, uh, your this competitor had more negative uh, sort of points of view than you had, or you can do social selling. So you could say, actually, every time this keyword's mentioned online, as Dan mentioned, uh, the beard product, um, if any time that's mentioned, you could get an email notification of a list of all those mentions. You could pass it to the sales team in your, in your agency, and they could do social selling for them as well for your clients. So a really cool way to build in that social selling aspect, as well as brand reputation management and competitor monitoring. So we've got powerful uh, reporting as well. So we've got uh, predefined reports. So it, we've just redone all these over the last couple of months. It's going to give you a huge range of new features. Uh, we've got over 200 plus modules. So everything from likes to mentions to, um, you know, people who have tagged you in pictures, direct messages, uh, response times, everything like that. So we can do the whole holistic view of all your social media activity across all your social media accounts. 
we've got uh, cheat sheets on each one as well so it actually explains to you which e which each metric means and how you can explain that to your clients so you can build a report you can look at the cheat sheet and go actually this is exactly how I should present it to my clients as well again these are going to be branded as your agency it's going to be a really good way to get ahead of your competitors as well uh, you can schedule reports as I mentioned by email or you can have a live link that you can give to your clients and they just click on the URL and it's a live report being fed, uh, fed all the time and updated so they can see things like um, customer feedback, mentions, so that's a really good way to do it. So that's the live links uh, and you can share reports with your colleagues and clients. So you can build um, reports, you can replicate them and then you can share them with your clients or your colleagues to really help that productivity rather than having to build them individually all the time. We also include Google, Google Analytics as well, so you can see a high level overview of your uh, client's web traffic. And, and if you're using um, our UTM link builder within Sendable, it's really helped to see that user journey on the website after they've come from an individual social media post. So you can really sort of tie together your social media activity with the, uh, with the visitors you're driving from there to their website as well. So we've got a feature called Client Connect as well. So Cl Client Connect is basically a piece of CSS code that you uh, you put onto um, not piece uh, uh, HTML, sorry, you put onto your web page, and it actually connects that web page to your white label sendable account. So your clients can uh, simply click on the logo, like you'll see the Facebook logo here. You'll ask them for their login details. They log in, and then it uh, securely adds their social media accounts into the white label version of sendable as well. So that's ideal for, you know, increasing security and they may not want to share their credentials with you. So this is a really easy bit of code that you put into the website to be able to do that as well. And it can all be customized as you like. So a really quick way to onboard your clients securely without having to ask for all their passwords. We've also got the open API, which I mentioned. So if you want to do things like build your own iPhone apps, uh, you can do. Basically, you can build your whole own social media management tool and have it bespoke, or you can link it to Salesforce. You can link it to any CRMs or any email software or any workflow software, anything like that. So with our API, you can actually go on our API site. Uh, if you've got a sendable account, uh, you can find that in your settings, and you can actually start uh, doing test requests already. Uh, on our API site, so I can send people details if they need that. So again, you can build your own product and really monetize it that way. And we've got some really cool um, partners we've worked with have built their own sort of uh, really cool uh, sort of social media automation tools with a uh, Sendable's API driving that in the background. We've also uh, got a content writing service. So basically, if you want us to write content on your behalf and we can white label that for you, that's possible. So uh, you'll find that just in the content library area. Uh, you can select original content, you can buy credits, and then you can order that. So if you're an agency that ha hasn't got time to actually write the content, we can do that on your behalf as well through the white label and another good revenue stream for you actually to build onto your agency as well. So you just have to mark up on that. So for everyone that's uh, filled out the G2 crowd review for us, if you've done that online today, or we can send you the link afterwards, and if you want to do that, uh, you get a free article credit as well. So we we'll write an article on your behalf of any subject, and we we'll deliver that back into Sendable for you. So if you go to G2 crowd and search Sendable and do a review of us, uh, we we'll happily give you a free article as well, which we just mentioned. Good stuff. So that's coming to the end of the webinar, and I, I can't thank Dan enough for all his insightful information. Uh, it's been recorded, and we've got the slides. So if there's any last-minute questions, um, please feel free to ask. Ask away. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, Cheryl, I'll send you the um, the, the link afterwards. Um, if you just go to G2 Crowd in Google and put Sendable as well, you should be able to find it. Uh, I can send you the link definitely afterwards as well, so no problem about that if you can't. But I really appreciate everyone staying to the end as well, because I know after all the information coming through to find out a bit about Sendable, hopefully wasn't too much. <laughs> That's good, mate. That's good. I learned something. Ah, nice one. Okay, great. So if there's no questions, we'll wrap everything up. So there's a free trial of Sendable here. So sendable.com forward slash free trial if you haven't tried it. Uh, you've probably taken a note of all Dan's information, but we'll send it all out to you again. And hopefully we'll follow this up in the next few months with another webinar. Hopefully if we can uh, we can sort that out, that'd be perfect. Yeah, let's do it. Nice one. And Paige says, uh, thank you. Enjoyed the webinar. Excellent job. Good stuff. Thanks very much for, for joining us. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, Dan, have a great evening, and everyone else where you are in the world, have a good morning, afternoon, or evening as well. So take care, everyone, and we'll get the recording over to you uh, shortly. Cheers. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Cheers, Dan. Take care. Bye.